Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. This episode is about the exit pupil. What is the exit pupil, and how do you use it to get the best views through your telescope? All telescopes and binoculars have an exit pupil. The exit pupil is the amount of light gathered by the telescope or binoculars that actually exits from the binoculars or telescope where you put your eye. On binoculars, that's easy to calculate. In a pair of 10 by 50 binoculars, you would take the diameter of the binoculars, 50, and divide it by the magnification of 10. So a pair of 10 by 50 binoculars has a five millimeter exit pupil. This pair of 10 by 42 binoculars has a 4.2 millimeter exit pupil. On telescope, the exit pupil can be calculated by dividing the focal length of the eyepiece by the focal ratio of the telescope. The focal ratio of your telescope is the focal length divided by the diameter of the telescope's aperture. For example, this refractor has a 102 millimeter diameter and a 714 millimeter focal length, giving it a focal ratio of f7. If I put a 36 millimeter eyepiece in an f7 telescope, that gives me an exit pupil of 5 millimeters, 36 divided by 7. If I use a 24 millimeter eyepiece, it'll give me an exit pupil of 3.4 millimeters, 24 divided by 7. Another way to calculate the exit pupil is to divide the aperture of the telescope by the magnification attained by the eyepiece. The magnification is the focal length of the telescope divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. So for example, the focal length of this telescope is 714 millimeters. So if I use a 24 millimeter eyepiece, that gives me 30 times magnification. The aperture of this refractor is 102 millimeters. So 102 millimeter aperture divided by 30 times magnification gives me a 3.4 millimeter exit pupil. And you can see the exit pupil created by your telescope by pointing your telescope to a bright light and holding a piece of paper out in front of the eyepiece, and you'll see it. But why do we care about the size of the exit pupil? Well, the size of the exit pupil will determine how much light gathered by your telescope will actually enter your eye, thus impacting what you can see through your telescope. So for any given object, you want to observe with your telescope, you'll want to know the exit pupil and the best one to use for that object. And to know that, you need to know your own eye's entrance pupil. In bright light, the pupil of the human eye will contract and become smaller, usually around two to four millimeters. But when we go outside at night, the size of our pupil will increase to the maximum size in order to allow us to gather as much light as possible so we can see in dim lighting. The size of the dark adaptive pupil will decrease as we age. As a general rule, young people have larger dark adaptive pupils of seven, maybe eight millimeters. In a test of 263 people by the National Library of Medicine, the mean dark adaptive pupil diameter of those aged 20 to 29 was 7.3 millimeters, and then by 84.85. And you can measure the size of your dark adaptive pupil, so let's do that now. Hello, it's a terrible evening for stargazing. <laughs> it's cloudy and the humidity is 75% but I looked outside and I could see a couple of stars. So I came outside to measure how much I could dilate my pupil after it had become dark adapted. So I have a set of metric hex wrenches and I always assumed given my age that it would be five millimeters. So I started at four millimeters and I held it up like this and I looked at Vega, I think, and I it was on both sides of it. So then I went to five millimeters and it was still split in the star. And I got all the way to six millimeters before it blocked the star. So that means I can dilate my pupil 
to six millimeters. I, I did it before I turned on this light. <laughs> Obviously, you don't have any lights on. And I tried not to look at the sky glow coming from the little town. It's not so little anymore. So I can dilate my pupil six millimeters. And you should check yours too. You can use hex wrenches, metric hex wrenches, or you can use drill bits. It's important to know the size of your dark adapted pupil in order to try to match the size of your exit pupil of your telescope to the entrance pupil of your own eye. If you match the exit pupil to your entrance pupil, then you're not wasting any of the light collected by your telescope and it will allow you to see the brightest image possible. If the exit pupil is smaller than your entrance pupil, then the image will be darker. And if the exit pupil is larger than your eye's entrance pupil, then your pupil in essence becomes like an f-stop on a camera, restricting the amount of light that enters your eye. On the other hand, having an exit pupil larger than your own entrance pupil will make matching your eye to the light exiting from the telescope easier. Sometimes it's hard to line up your head precisely to catch the exiting light when the size of the exit pupil exactly equals the size of your entrance pupil. But to attain a large exit pupil means using a very low magnification, which is the opposite of what you want to do for observing the planets, for example. You want high magnification for planets. And if the magnification is too low, you won't be able to make out structure on galaxies and some dark nebulae and some dim, diffuse nebulae. So determining which exit pupil is best for observing any given object means determining your own eye's entrance pupil and what magnification and exit pupil is best for that particular object. Very low magnifications are known as the richest field because they allow you to see the widest field of view, the most stars in the field of view, and the brightest images. To make use of the full aperture of your telescope, the diameter of the telescope exit pupil would match the diameter of your eye's entrance pupil, and that means low magnification. What the richest field is depends on the aperture of your telescope, your age, and the diameter of your dark adapted pupil. This can be demonstrated in a chart with exit pupil along the left column, along the far right column, and partly along the top is the focal ratio of your telescope, and along the bottom is the eyepiece focal length. And various ages are listed at the top going down a little bit. For me, I measure my entrance pupil at six millimeters. So for this 102 millimeter refractor with a focal ratio of seven, the richest field would be to use a 40 millimeter eyepiece, which will render about a six millimeter exit pupil. But that'll only give me 18 times magnification. And that's not much magnification, but it would make viewing through the eyepiece very pleasing. I won't have to tilt my head at a particular angle to get the light from the eyepiece completely lined up with my pupil, and the star field will be very pleasing to view. But that magnification might be too low for some deep sky objects, and it's definitely too low for the planets, double stars, and detail on the moon. Looking at this chart, we can see that for my F7 telescope, I'll need a 40 millimeter eyepiece to achieve a six millimeter exit pupil. You can see why Schmidt-Cassegrain telescopes are ideal for the planets. Schmidt-Cassegrain telescopes usually have a focal ratio of 10 or even higher that allows you to achieve a high magnification with them, but it's difficult to get low magnifications. But for some deep sky objects and double stars, you'll need to use an exit pupil below the size of your eye's entrance pupil in order to see the objects at all. Now, let's talk about low exit pupils.
the lowest useful exit pupil is 0.5 millimeters. Lower than that will make blurring from diffraction due to the properties of light itself. It will become noticeable and also defects in your own eye like floaters and also dirt and defects in your telescope's optics will become very apparent. As a general rule of thumb, you can use an exit pupil from 0.5 millimeters to 2 millimeters for double stars, the planets, and small details on the moon. If the seeing is poor, you might need to increase the exit pupil to 2 millimeters, maybe even 4 millimeters. And for small galaxies or planetary nebulae, 2 to 4 millimeters. But for some faint deep sky objects, it's best to experiment with various exit pupils and magnifications to find the one that works best for that object. And this means changing your eyepieces until you find one that's best suited to that object. There are calculators that will calculate this for you for various deep sky objects. Steve Waldy has created one such calculator called Eyepiece that he makes available on his website for non-commercial individual astronomy hobbyists. He developed this um, software a long time ago, so it works with DOS, but since most people use Windows-based computers now and not DOS, you'll need to also download the DOS converter that he makes available on his website with the IP software to get it to work on a Windows-based computer. I was able to get the IP software to work on my Windows 10 laptop. Also, the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, RASC.ca, has a calculator under supplements that will tell you whether you'll be able to see specific deep sky objects after you enter various parameters of your telescope, aperture, focal ratio, the eyepiece used, and any filter you use. The calculator is called Magnification and Contrast Calculator. With this calculator, you can use luminance values in magnitude per arc second squared or the typical visual magnitude scale. After you enter the parameters of the object and your telescope, it will tell you whether you will be able to see that object, yes, no, or baby. There might be other magnification and eyepiece calculators for various deep sky objects that are available online that I haven't mentioned or I'm not aware of, but you can search for those if you're unable to download Steve Waldy's eyepiece software or if you're unable to use the Royal Astronomical Society's calculator. Or the math makes you dizzy or reducing amateur astronomy to mathematical equations repels you, no. then just experiment for yourself to see what works best for you in your telescope. And take notes of what the worked for you for later use. In general, though, to see the planets, it's okay to use very low exit pupils, down to 0.5 millimeters. But to see faint deep sky objects, select an eyepiece producing an exit pupil of around 2 to 3 millimeters. Exit pupils larger than that may make the object fall below the threshold visibility. And exit pupils smaller than that, which would correspond to high magnifications, may dim the object excessively to the point that it becomes invisible. Because keep in mind that the smaller the exit pupil, the darker both the background sky and the object will become. For example, a notoriously difficult diffuse nebula is IC 5146, the cocoon nebula in Cygnus, the swan. I tried to see this in an 80 millimeter refractor in a Bortle 3 SQM 21.07 I started with a 24 millimeter eyepiece, which gave me 20 times magnification and a 4 millimeter exit pupil, but I couldn't see it. Probably I could not see it because my 80 millimeter refractor did not have enough light gathering capability. So I then tried with a 203 millimeter telescope with a 36 millimeter eyepiece. That gave me 56 times magnification and an exit pupil of 3.6 millimeters. By experimenting with several different filters, UHC, 
O3 and even H beta and using averted vision and looking for a long time, I was able to see the cocoon nebula and the long dark lane known as Barnard 168, a dark nebula emanating from the cocoon nebula. You can look up the size, the magnitude, and the luminance or surface brightness of various deep sky objects in the Deep Sky Field Guide to Uranometria 2000. Or you can just look it up online and you can find charts that will tell you the aperture of the telescope that you need for various deep sky objects. For example, Alan Dyer and Alistair Ling's Deep Sky Challenge lists the minimum aperture telescope needed for various deep sky objects in their Deep Sky Challenge listed in the really great book, The Observer's Handbook, published by the Royal Astronomical Society every year. This is just 2023. Another example would be IC 1318, a very large emission nebula around Seder in Cygnus the Swan, which you can see with an 80 millimeter telescope. I looked at it the other night in my 80 millimeter refractor in a rural setting, SQM 21. Everyone's different and you have to use the eyepiece that works for you and an exit pupil that works best for your entrance pupil and use an appropriate filter when needed for difficult emission nebulae. And just because some chart says you need a certain aperture telescope or a calculator says you can't see something with your telescope, try anyway. They're not always 100% accurate because there are so many variables involved, such as how long did you dark adapt? How dark are your skies? How good is your eyesight? How long did you look? How good are your optics? How much experience do you have at the eyepiece? The list goes on and on. So go out and experiment with various eyepieces and exit pupils to see what is possible to see with your telescope. But I hope you found this presentation on the exit pupil useful. In an upcoming episode, we'll put it to practical use on a very famous but frustratingly difficult to see nebula. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.